And then, uh, let's see, our next one, your handwriting is getting a little worse, um, is to stop yeah. over relying on others. And that kind of ties in with stop yeah. expecting others to do it. Like, we, we did kind yeah. of talk about that. This one is good. Stop making absolute decisions, meaning that you're, either your decisions or other people's decisions are deemed as exclusively right or exclusively yeah. wrong. Because sometimes we can make bad decisions because we don't have all the information. We make decisions purely out of emotion. Or one person who I know or name nameless says, I use my opinion in order to make my decisions. Well, that's dangerous because there is an opinion that women shouldn't have the right to vote. There is an opinion that people of color were less than human. Opinions can be real dangerous. Yeah. So you can't be... You can't be so absolute because, like I said, there might be things I might not have accounted for. Or there's new information out there to make a better decision. So it can't always be, I'm always right and you're always wrong. Or I'm always wrong and you're always right. Take better inventory so you can make smarter decisions. There's a handful of situations where yeah. you can make absolute decisions. Yeah, and like, those usually involve death. Yeah, if it's a fire... It's not, let's investigate, get the heck out of here. <laughs> right. That's different. But when it's something like, you know. If you're in the woods and you hear Jason, like, don't Well, I wouldn't be that foolish to be out there. But here's a good one. It's like, well, in my opinion, because of the way they sounded, they didn't, they're not smart. Well, some brilliant people might not be the most eloquent speakers. So you can't just judge somebody based on how they speak to measure intelligence or ability. Well, shoot, you just jumped into the next one, which has to do with judging people. So we can't do the absolutes because in a lot of cases we're, we're doing that. Like you don't, you know, it's, it's very easy based on, you know, how you were raised, what you're around, to look at people who aren't like you and to form an opinion. And our opinions are formed from a lot of places. It's our parents, you know, uh, it's the television, it's the news, it's the music we listen to, the movies we watch, and we can go on and on. But, you know, one of the things that I learned being in the military, I had to deal with people from all walks of life. And when you're a northerner, there are certain ways that you think about people who are in the south. Right? <laughs> or people, if you grew up in the big city, yeah. how you view people who grew up in the suburbs or smaller cities. Or smaller cities. Because you're not from, areas. you're not right. real, and you haven't seen this. Right. Or even people, I always remember when I taught, and I might have used this example before, one person thought because they hadn't traveled somewhere, they hadn't been anywhere. And I'm like, wait a minute, when you dial it back, there are places that one or the other has or hasn't been to. It doesn't make their experience more or less authentic. It right. just makes it different. Yeah, and I think you need to, to sometimes get to know people. Um, you know, it, it just makes the world a better place when you just don't, you know, judge people based on how they look. I mean, be safe, but don't judge people based on how they look. You know, judge, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt unless they do something to, you know. It's the whole utilize. don't judge a book by its cover or get as complete information as possible before right. you make a decision. And this one leads to, sounds like, oh, the, gosh, this yeah. is the same That's one almost. almost, right? Stop stressing. Yeah. That's kind of a hard thing to to say because I look at stressing and worrying. They're kind of the same, but I still look at them a little bit different because um, you could stress because you have a lot of things going on. It's not necessarily worrying, but you're stressing because there's a lot on your plate. But that's a hard one. I think I what it, that. I think what it is is you got to identify what those triggers are and how you better manage those. Like if you stress because, oh, my gosh, my team lost the game. Here's, here's a good example. Hey, is that stress? Yeah, you think about sporting events and people get all buck wild. I'm like, dude, it's the first game of the season. No, it's a game. Forget the first game of the season. But it's a yeah, freaking game. It's true. You are not going to, unless you own the team or unless you're a player on the team, uh -huh. your income is not going to be impacted. The only thing I think people should stress about is money and their relationships and your job, of course. Well, but that's still I, I'm going I'm to say this. As you kind of go through life experience you know the things that bothered you as, as a 20 year old probably mm. don't bother you as a 30 year old you're always going to have some degree of stress but what are you really stressing over I think that's kind of what it is and if you're still stressing over stuff because this person isn't paying me no mind <laughs> They're not why paying you use, me Wait, attention. first of all, why are you using a girl's voice? I'm just using that None to show of, that I'm no, talented and not only that, I mean, this is my normal semi-allergic voice, but 
you know, for dramatic effect. But no, like some people stress over trivial things and they lose sight of what things are already in place and what things you can continue to work on. Yeah. So as best as possible, really take inventory and ask yourself, is this really the best response? Like if someone misspells your name, is a response to smack them upside the head? No, that's not the best response. And I'm using that as an extreme example, but we all have to pause and take inventory. What's really the appropriate response based on what's going on? So some people stress, oh my gosh, there's supposed to be 10 cupcakes and we've got 15. Okay, you've got, you've got more than enough, big deal. If someone wants extras or whatever. You take five home. Exactly. Quiet. Take them home. Take them home. So the next one is over caring about what others think and say. And I think that's just a natural human yeah, um, is. response is to, you know, whether it's to mull over what you've said or what you could have said better or how you could have been wittier when something happened. Um but it, the reality is the people that you're usually you're usually worried about what they think um, or what they have to say, they have no impact on your livelihood. Like, unless they're paying, like, you know, and I know this is mean, but, you know, the, the, the people that I care about as far as what they say and their opinions are the people that are closest to me. So, you know, you have friends, you have associates, and you have kind of an inner circle, right? Mm -hmm. And so, to me, it's only, those are the only people that I actually care about what they think or say. It, the other stuff is just kind of like, uh, all right, well, um, you know, I appreciate you, but... <laughs> unless it directly affects your ability to have your roof over your head, clothes on your back, feet on the table. The, I mean, feet on the table. I meant food on the table. Don't put your feet on the table unless it's yours. But anyway, <laughs> like, unless it has those type of effects, does it really matter? Like, yeah. for example, like on the book thing, why are you writing a book? I'm like, dude, you can't even spell your name correctly, so why am I even... Uh, that is to. judging. <laughs> no, this person really can't spell their name correctly. It's anyway, true. I've anyway, seen it. Stop. I've seen it. That's not judging. That's fact. I did research. I really did. <laughs> I did. Laugh all you want. I did. Yes. And I guess I'll get us into our last one. But isn't this interesting? Our last one. And the first one. Our like kind of the same the cycle. We just, we just, we use what the reciprocal. Yeah. So. But we should stop. Is stop letting certain knuckleheads run slipshod. That can be the person that always cuts a fool and they like tear stuff up. Like just, just, just stop them from doing that. Yeah. To the same person we mentioned at the beginning, the current president. Yeah, he's. There was a lot of Trump comments, and so. Um, hey man, I'm just saying. You know, and the only way to stop if you don't like, you know, uh, an elected official. Make sure that the people that are around that person don't get reelected, especially if you oh, can't yeah. do anything about it for the next couple of years. You know, again, don't just talk about it. Say something to your elected officials. I mean, our country right now, even though things are crazy, I love what's happening at these town halls. I love the fire that these people have in them as they're talking to their elected officials. You know, it's 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 a great thing. So yeah, that yeah. ties in with stop complaining, and you can complain to a point. But then what course of action is going to make the most sense? Not just for you, but for the majority yeah. of people. Whether they look like you, sound like you, whatever. Right. Okay, right. so I guess we're going to do... We're going to oh, well, actually, before we go, before we, we go, go, I want to talk about um, the Alpha Derby. Okay. Um, talk about different things we're doing. So let's, let's go. So the Alpha Derby. Thanks to everybody who's lending support. The Alphas of Atlanta, this is the third year doing the Alpha Derby weekend, which is the Kentucky Derby themed event. Uh, this year is the first year we added a third day of programming. So the beautiful thing is VIPs are sold out. The Sunday brunch, which is expected to draw about 400 people, that's sold out. So he's telling you, but you weekend, can't come. No, I'm not telling you that. Weekend passes are sold out. The only tickets that you can get are going to be for Friday night's kickoff and then Saturday's main event at the um, City Club of Buckhead. So to recap, May 5th, 6th, and 7th, May 5th is the kickoff event at the West End. You can still get tickets for that. May 6th is the main event at the City Club of Buckhead. You can still get tickets for that. But Sunday, May 7th, brunch is sold, is sold out. And another neat thing is May 4th, Three people who have written books, uh, Darius Gordine, 
Edna B. and myself, we're doing a little writer's happy hour workshop May 4th at Cat's Cafe from 6 to 8.15. So come on after work, meet, greet, network, listen to the work that we're doing. And we're donating a portion of the proceeds to the Alphas of Atlanta Foundation. So that's going to help with the larger goal supporting eight different nonprofits. How many, how many people are you expecting? Oh, for the entire weekend, yeah. we're anticipating about at least 600 for Friday night's kickoff, about 1,200 for Saturday, and about 400 for Sunday. That's like 2,200 people. That's to put good. in perspective, the first year we did this in 2015, we had about 900 people. So we've doubled yeah. our attendance. And the nicest thing is our goal is to donate to each of the eight nonprofits at least seven grand. So that means for the three years we've done this event, we've been about 120,000 yeah. that we've donated. We're pleased to have, you know, I'm going to be ripping and running around because I'm on, I'm working with the press and media, mm. but <laughs> Emma is going to be holding it down for Timely Talk and will definitely yes. be there on Friday on site yes, yes. and Sunday yes. on site. So we're very thankful for her providing this service as well as your business being a sponsor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all of your comments. Uh, I appreciate it. We look forward to more comments um, uh, and helping us with some of the themes for the show. Um, again, if you need to reach us, you can always reach me at emmanosmoney at gmail.com. For me, the easiest is probably email asnortonccs at gmail.com and uh, Twitter and Instagram at asnortonccs. Those are the business ones. Yeah. And then the writing one is author A. Snorton on Twitter and Instagram. And then just write out author Andrew Snorton on Facebook. Yeah, just do Just that. write it out. Just write it just out. Just write it out. All right, take care. <laughs> See you soon.